So let's go over how to work data screening for this class assignment. Um, in this particular case, what I have is a uh, data set of our male body dissatisfaction, and we're going to screen the entire data set at once and talk about how to um, answer one of these assignments. So first thing I'm gonna do is open RStudio, clear out whatever I had open last, okay. and create a new R script. So the first thing you can do is set your working directory. So I'm gonna just save this file. Um, and this is gonna be folders and folders, so one second. <clears throat> All right, and then we'll just save it here. So we're working on data screening. So I've saved my file. <clears throat> Well, I've tried, there we go. And I'm gonna set my working directory to make this next part easier. So I'm gonna do session, working directory to source file location where I saved it. And that means that now it knows where I'm looking for the files that I'm about to use. Okay. So I'm gonna read in the data set. Okay. If you're not comfortable with this, you can use the import from local file and pick the data set that you're interested in. So I could pick data screening here, and I'm gonna call it master. Be sure the heading is on. So that's one way to do it. Um, but the easier way, once you've set your working directory, which I accidentally set to the wrong directory, is to do hard put in the data set as read.csv, and then type the name of the data set. And that imported the same data set. So this data set is really big. We have 800 participants over 12 variables, but look at first variable is it participant ID. So that's gonna be important to not data screen that one. So now that I've imported, let's try these steps. So we're gonna check for out of range scores first. Uh, and the easiest way to do that is to use the summary function of the data set and look for anything that is larger than six or less than one. So I have all of these are one, these are six. I'm ignoring participant ID, one to six, one to six, one to six. Okay, so it doesn't appear that we have anything outside of one to six. And so to include that summary, what I can do is take a screenshot or cut and paste this. Um, if you're on Windows, you can use snip it does work a little better um, than cutting and pasting because then it doesn't it lines up properly. Okay. So fix out of range scores. Well, just parts not necessary. So we don't have any problems with the data. So with missing data, I'm gonna look up here and look at the summary, and it appears to be sort of random, <clears throat> but. Um, so I would say M completely at random, M car, with the caveat that some participants just quit the survey. So that's M nar. And I know that because I'm the one that made the missing data, but if you wanted to look, you could click on the data set and there, here's a good example right here at the top. So one way you can kind of do that is to sort the data. Um, the problem is when you do that, it always puts the NAs at the somewhere randomly. Um, but the easiest way to tell if it's MCAR or MNAR without pulling any special functions is actually to do uh, this next particular missing by participant. So let's calculate our missing values by participant. Okay. So I'm gonna write myself a function where I'm gonna calculate percent missing and create a function of x where I'm gonna add up, so sum, all the time something is an na, so that's the is.na function of x. Okay. And so that's gonna add up all the na values, then I'm gonna divide by the length of x. Okay. That will make that a proportion. If I multiply by 100, that will give me the percent of missing values. So it sums up the na values, divides by the length, and then multiplies by 100. Now that function pops up over here, but that's not gonna actually do anything. So I have to um, <clears throat> ca 
calculate the percent missing for participants now. So I'm going to use my apply function because apply will let me calculate things by row, which is each participant. So I'm going to type in the data set. Um, but I'm going to screen out question one because it is a, um, it's not really part of the data set, it's just a participant number. We calculate this by row, one for rows, two for columns, and then our function that we just made. So what that did was it gave me the percent missing for each participant. This is already in percents, so it's not proportion. So this is 90% is missing. So they're like missing the whole row at this point. Um, all but one question. So the data is pretty random what's missing, but um, what's really happening is people are just quitting. So that's actually um, in car because it doesn't appear to be the same question every single time. And then, but when participants quit, that's in NAR. So we want to get rid of that. Um, so one thing we can do is to summarize this and to not have 700 columns, we can do a table of the number of missing values. And so that gives me some purport, some percents to look at. So everybody's over 5%. Because I don't have more than 20 questions, so. Um, I need to exclude all of that. So let's exclude them first. Uh, so no miss equals, um, or we used to, we, when we do this with uh, mice, we often talk about this as people we can replace. So people we can replace is subset of our master data set where missing, that column missing is less than or equal to 5%. Now think about that is if I take a summary of my replace people, um, basically there's no missing data at this point. So I could use apply to look at columns. So let's do master, take out the first column. Two this time, percent miss. But um, now there shouldn't be any missing data. Well, that's interesting. Um, I don't know why it's giving me these really small numbers. So it should only give me um, any missing values by column. All right, so these are the percent missing values for the master data set. So I made a mistake there. Um, you want to do this on the data set we've already fixed by excluding all the people. My fault. And now I can see that I do not have any missing data by column. So we don't have to replace any missing data. Okay. So um, not necessary here. Okay. All right. Oh no, I'm overwriting my homework file. <laughs> Eek, let me fix that real quick. Data screen worked, there we go. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's calculate for our outliers now. We're going to look at Mahalanobis distance, which is um, really pretty useful when you're doing uh, multivariate uh, normality, such as when we would work do that for SEM. Um, all right, so let's do outliers here. So we're going to calculate Mahalanobis, and we're going to call those Mahal, and we're going to use the Mahalanobis function. Okay. So the first thing you do is you put in the data set name, which we're calling replace people, or I could make this probably a little easier on myself, call this no miss for no missing. Okay, that's just a matter of preference there. So we're going to do no miss, but be sure you take out that participant number. It actually doesn't really matter too, too much, but conceptually we don't really want to screen that variable. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is um, call means. I think I have this in the right order. Use this no miss again, but no participant number and covariance. It's the last one. Did I do that in the right order? Oop, call means is with a capital M. So now what I have is a Mahalanobis distance for every participant. And I want to maybe take a, a table of um, the Mahalanobis distances, but I really want to know how many times they're less than some cutoff. Well, we haven't created our cutoff yet, so let's do that. 
So our cutoff score is going to be with the chi-square function, so q chi-square. It's 1 minus alpha, so we're using 0 0.001. Our degrees of freedom is the number of columns that we're using. So in call, and then the name of the data set. So no miss, but do it the exact same way. So the same thing that goes here also goes here, so that you don't um, give yourself more degrees of freedom when you shouldn't. So our cutoff score is 31. Um, if I wanted to calculate just degrees of freedom, I would run this. Okay. So our degrees of freedom is 11 for our 11 questions. So now that we have a cutoff score, let's look at how many people there are. So we have um, 16 outliers. So the false people who are not less than their cutoff score are outliers. So I have 16. So my degrees of freedom is 11. My cutoff score, sorry, I looked at right here, but you could also type it. Okay, so 3126. My out, I have 16 outliers and I'm gonna delete those. Okay, so we're gonna do no outliers equals a subset where Mahal, I'm sorry, uh, no missing, Mahal is less than cutoff. Okay. So one reason we do the table in this format is so we remember to only exclude people who are greater than the cutoff. Um, and so this selects people who are all less. Uh, don't flip that sign the other way because then you'll just have a data set of outliers. All right, so check, we deleted them. Let's do a sin, uh, symbols for numbers table to check for additivity or multicollinearity. Uh, and this is especially important in sim because if things are too highly correlated, uh, it will blow up. So what you do is first create your correlation table. Drop that participant number column. And then that should work. We don't have any uh, missing data. So then it's symbols for numbers of that correlation table. And what we're looking for is things that are stars or Bs, because those are above 0.9. So I've got some pluses, because um, this data set is essentially something we did with EFA with. So um, I expect them to be highly correlated, but I don't want a star or a B. And I especially don't want a one on the off diagonal. So a one in any place but this one diagonal line here. So here's my correlation table. Are any of them too highly correlated? Nope, nothing's over 0.9. Now to do this next section, what we're gonna do is set up sort of a fake regression. So this is an assumption setup spot here. So I'm going to first create a random variable using the chi-square function. So um, we need n, so the number of people. So we're gonna do n row of our no miss data set. Um, and seven degrees of freedom, because seven seems to work. We're gonna run a fake regression, predicting our random variable with the entire data set. Um, data equals no miss, minus one. So we're gonna ex still keep excluding that participant number. Now I could have dropped it at the beginning and just added it back in later, but I'm kind of showing you how you don't have to do that. So this is a fake regression using all columns to predict random. And so our assumptions are that we have normal distributions, linear distributions, homogeneity and homoscedasticity. Um, and using that, that sort of random predictor, we can make sure that the residuals are random and randomly normally distributed. So let's do normality first. So we're going to take a histogram of the residuals. I haven't created those yet, so let's do that first. So I like to call them standardized equals our student of fake. Okay. Those are the studentized residuals, but close enough. Um, and then one more thing we want to do is pull our fitted values. And we're going to use that in our homogeneity plot. So we take a histogram of the standardized residuals and look at that. And that looks pretty normal. We might have a little bit of skew out here, but most of the data is between two and two and centered nicely over zero. So is it normal? 
for linearity, what you want to do is do a QQ plot of the standardized residuals. Uh, QQ norm, I'm sorry, QQ norm. There we go. But to help interpretation, we're going to add AB line 0, 1. And that adds a line of fit that it should um, follow along. Now this is slightly nonlinear, so slightly curvilinear, but between two and two, our main proportion of the data is fairly close to the line. Outside on the edges, it's kind of veering off. Um, and it is extremely hard to predict out here past these standard deviations because the likelihood of them is so small. So I don't want to take this too, too seriously way out here. And because most of this is pretty close. Um, you could also try whatever analysis you're focusing on. If curvilinearity is an option, you could try it to see if it fits better. But I imagine since the majority of the data is pretty close, it's going to be all right. Okay. So on this one, I would take yes, because it's okay, two to two, or it's iffy as well. Last thing we're going to do is create a residual plot. So we're going to plot our fitted values by our standardized residuals. So there's our, our chart. Um, but look here, I forgot to uh, scale the fitted values. So I don't know what six to eight means. So I'll just go back and add the scale function here because I'm doing this from memory and I'm kind of amazed I'm getting it right so far. But um, if I scale those values, rerun that plot, now it's a z-score on the bottom and that makes it a little easier to interpret. We're gonna add a, a line at zero, zero for interpretation and a vertical line at zero also for interpretation. And if you're used to doing this in SPSS, this is the same graph that you get using the standardized residual plot. So let me copy that. So do we meet homogeneity? Well, homogeneity is the spread around zero. It's pretty even this way, not so much this way. So I would say no, because the data is two to, zero to two here and zero to five there. Not really. Now for homoscedasticity, looking at this plot, it looks like a Dorito chip to me, but it's like a, it's like the pyramids. So I would also say no, because the spread here is not even along the zero line. Okay. So that's a quick and dirty version of uh, data screening for a kind of intro to R class assignment.